Hey, Judah and Zaya. Happy birthday, guys. Hey, I wish I could be there to hang out with you and, and share some of this cool stuff with you in person, but until we get to see each other again, I thought I'd invite you into my workshop through this video, and uh, we could talk a little bit about tools. Some of the coolest things I remember uh, from being a kid your age uh, was working alongside uh, my uncles in their workshops and learning about tools and learning how to make things. And so the present I've, um, I've got for you guys this year for your birthday is specifically that. It's a tool and some knowledge. I'm gonna teach you guys something about um, working in a complicated workshop like this that I didn't learn until I was a big kid, uh, much older than you guys. And it makes a crazy workshop like this seem a lot less intimidating. So I heard that you and your daddy are working on projects in the workshop and you're starting to do some basic woodworking stuff and um, introducing you to tools like drills and knives and saws and sanders. Um, I want to uh, introduce you guys to an idea uh, that is going to simplify all of these crazy tools down to basically just one or two different basic ideas. Um, like for example, uh, something that you guys probably have already begun to work with, um, a carving knife. Now yours may not look like mine, um, but uh, basically it works the same way. You have a really, really sharp end. And when you put that sharp blade against the wood and push it through the wood, uh, you make shavings. Now this is a really basic idea of um, basically every woodworking tool that I know of. Um, some woodworking tools, for example, um, look a lot different, right? A small hatchet, for example, doesn't seem at all like a carving knife. Uh, but think about it this way. A hatchet is a sharpened edge with a handle, just like a carving knife is a sharpened edge with a handle. Now, a, a, an axe or, a, um, or another splitting tool like a hatchet uh, will be for what's called riving wood. And if you know how to read the wood really, really well, you'll be able to uh, follow a nice straight grained piece of wood and split it along its grains. Uh, this is a really fast, really clean way to work with wood if you can kind of practice it and, and, uh, and learn how to split along grains. It's faster than a power saw, it's faster than, um, and, and less expensive and less dirty than all the other, uh, all the other ways that I know. Um, but what happens when you split wood, is even along nice straight grains, is it leaves a lot of rough edges. And so maybe um, you would reach for something like sandpaper, right? You're gonna take some sandpaper and work down all of those rough edges. Well, uh, sandpaper can be a really awesome tool but it makes a lot of dust in the studio, right? And I know that you and your daddy, uh, you guys work in inside workshops and breathing all that dust can be really nasty. Your boogers turn weird colors and you get a cough from it. And so there might be a better way uh, for you to be able to work with uh, wood and actually make it smoother than sandpaper um, with a different kind of tool. Uh, but before we talk about hand planes, I wanna introduce you, I wanna show you a couple more examples of tools that use a blade a lot like um, your carving knife. Now, maybe you've uh, tried to drill a hole in a piece of wood, right? And you would use something like a drill bit, and that drill bit has um, a sharp end, right? And you mount into something like a drill or your daddy's drill press. Um, but if you take a closer look at the end of that drill bit, what you'll find is, aside from all these really interesting spiraling flutes, you'll have right here at the end, a blade, a sharpened blade just like the sharpened blade on your carving knife, right? Or uh, on the, uh, another tool that's very similar to that carving knife uh, would be a bench chisel. Um, maybe your daddy has a couple of these he can show you, uh, but a bench chisel is essentially a different way of holding on to that blade like a carving knife. If your bench chisel is sharp enough, it should be able to make shavings just like your carving knife makes shavings. And maybe on your daddy's uh, circular saw, right? Or his big table saw, uh, you've seen him change out the blade on the inside. Well, take a close look at each one of the teeth on that circular saw, and you'll see that each one of those teeth has a blade mounted on the end. This particular blade has uh, 50 teeth on the outside, right? 50 little knives that spin around on the outside. Uh, a tool like a router it seems like a really complicated tool, uh, but if we just take a little bit closer look, yeah, mounted to the end of all this machinery is this little bit that has two spinning knives, pretty much exactly like the kind of knives that you would find on either a drill bit or your carving knife again. So uh, when you start to look around the wood shop a little bit more closely, you'll notice that just about every tool that's designed to make cuts in wood or to work with wood is essentially a bunch 
of little chisels or a bunch of little blades. So if you start to think of just about every woodworking tool as just a different version of that chisel or that carving knife, your workshop gets really, really simple. And all the tools that you see around here are just different ways of working with that carving knife. Now, I'll introduce you to my favorite tool in the woodworking shop, which is a spoke shave. I got this spoke shave at a garage sale one time, um, but it's very similar to another kind of tool that I want to introduce you to, the hand plane or the bench plane. Now, this bench plane was your great granddaddy's bench plane, and it was a rusty mess when I inherited it. Now, I inherited two of your great grandfather's hand planes, and both of them were a really giant rusty mess. I will show you the cap iron and the blade here, just as an example, right? Uh, this is basically what the hand planes looked like when I got them. And when I first inherited them, I cleaned up one of the bench planes, and uh, I used it in my workshop for a long time. And this plane just sat rusty in my cabinet for years and years and years. But I'm cleaning it up for you guys so that you can have a bench plane in your workshop and so that you can have a tool just like I really love, one of these spoke shaves. I'll demonstrate just briefly how they work, and then I'll show you a little bit of how I'm cleaning it up. And then in the future, I'll send you guys some videos and some cool projects on what you can do with these two basic woodworking tools. The spoke shave is like a carving knife, but with a spoke shave, it's like a carving knife that I hold on to with two hands. And the shavings that I make are much longer and curlier shavings. Now the spoke shave that I found for you guys, I found online and I purchased it. And I only had to make a couple of modifications to it, like sharpening the blade and polishing some of the surfaces so that it makes nice, long, curly shavings too. Now, here's one of the main bonuses, I think, of working with a tool like a spoke shave instead of working with some of that sandpaper. The sandpaper makes a lot of dust, and all that dust gets into my lungs. But when I work with a uh, spoke shave, look at that nice, cool, curly cue shaving. I want you guys to try this tool on a piece of wood in your daddy's workshop, and I want you to show me some of these cool, curly cue shavings that you can make. Now, a bench plane, or in this case, this is called a block plane. This is a different one that I have in my workshop. Works very similar. It's just that the blade that's mounted in this tool has a little bit larger sole on the bottom so that I can get nice, smooth, straight edges. cues that come off of that type of wood are a little bit wider and they're as wide as the blade that I have mounted in the bottom of this in this bench plane. So you can see the two different sizes, right? My spoke shave blade is a little bit smaller and is good for working two-handed around the edges of a piece of wood. And a bench plane is good for flattening larger uh, larger surfaces. This surface is the edge of a board that could be joined to the, uh, to the edge of a different board. This particular board that I'm working on is a piece of black walnut, and so the shavings come off and they look a little bit like bacon. So I've got a little bit more work to do fixing up uh, your great grandpa's hand plane before I send it out to you guys. spoke shave already worked out. I'm excited to send you guys some projects so that you can kind of practice your skills with this and make some shavings and maybe you can even teach your daddy some of these cool new tricks too because your daddy and I we didn't learn this stuff until we were big kids. So happy birthday Judah and Isaiah. I'm excited to see you guys soon.